Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 8th of December, and it's National Brownie Day. And a big happy birthday to Raheem Sterling, Dominic Monaghan, Sinead O'Connor, and Nicki Minaj. The government is struggling to contain the escalating scandal over PPE. Tory peer Michelle Moan, who had been at the centre of claims over PPE supply, has now taken a leave of absence from the House of Lords, which has led to the government announcing she's lost the whip by default. Labour's shadow levelling up Secretary Lisa Nandy says the government's handling of PPE and the level of preparation for the COVID pandemic was simply not good enough. But one of the reasons that we needed PPE really quickly is because the government had... Uh, pandemic plan that they didn't appear to know about and when the pandemic hit they were completely unprepared. Director of the Good Law Project Julian Morham gave an insight into what really went on and the corruption PPE companies participated in. We've been able to show um, that proximity to Conservative Party ministers had a um, had, had an effect. If you were close to Conservative Party ministers, you were much more likely to win contracts. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak appears to be trying to distance himself from the whole scandal, even though he was Chancellor throughout the period. At Prime Minister's question time, he sounded like he's just seen a newspaper for the first time in a week. L- like everyone else, I was absolutely shocked to read about the allegations. <laughs> It's, it's, absu- it's absolutely right that she is no longer attending the House of Lords and therefore no longer has the Conservative whip. The season of festive strikes shows no sign of letting up, with the GMB union announcing that more than 10,000 ambulance workers have voted to strike in England and Wales. Ambulance staff have joined nurses in strike action and will walk out on December the 21st in a dispute over pay. But Gary Smith from the GMB union says they're only striking because Tory cuts are causing deaths. People are dying because of cuts and ideologically imposed cuts coming from the Tory government. And I'm sorry, we are not going to be lectured by a Conservative government. This is a government that parted while people died, lest we forget. Airport border guards also joined the list of those preparing to strike across Christmas on Wednesday, which could affect a third of flight departures over the Christmas period. Rishi Sunak's pledged to introduce tough new legislation to limit the impacts of strikes, but why are the government refusing to negotiate, you might ask? Well, Health Secretary Stephen Barclay has the answer. Or excuse, you decide. If everyone in the public sector were to receive a pay rise in line with inflation, that would cost an extra £28 billion, an extra £1,000 per household. And at a time of huge cost of living pressures, it's important we get that balance right. Fears are growing over strep A as nine children in the UK are now known to have died in the recent outbreak. The infection is usually mild and treated easily with antibiotics, but it's been reported that some doctors and pharmacists are having difficulty sourcing penicillin. Health Secretary Steve Barclay doesn't seem worried, though. He has apparently been reassured there's enough to go round. As of last night when we checked, uh, they said they could reassure us that they've got good stock and we're moving that around to meet demand. But pharmacist Dr Leila Hanbeck isn't convinced. She gave the lowdown on what's happening on the ground. Uh, Nope. Um, There is a patch of supply. When you go online to order these medicines, particularly uh, the liquid ones for children, the, the product is out of stock. And this is happening all over the country. President Vladimir Zelensky in the spirit of Ukraine has been named as Time magazine's 2022 Person of the Year. The award goes to an event or person deemed to have had the most influence on global events over the past 12 months, and the magazine's editor says this year's was a no-brainer amid the Russian war on Ukraine. Meanwhile, President Putin seems to be escalating nuclear tensions once again. He spoke at Russia's annual Human Rights Council meeting, clarifying that there would be no further mobilisation of troops at the moment, and that while Russia had not gone mad, he's still not ruled out the option of going nuclear. Our strategy of using means of protection, and we consider nuclear weapons as protection, is all set around a retaliatory strike. That is, when a blow is struck at us, we strike back. Still to come on the Smart 7, Pinocchio's back and he's not cheap, plus more Rugby World Cup drama, right after this. Welcome back. Three.
We're waiting for the quarterfinals of the Football World Cup, but there's chaos in international rugby as teams prepare for 2023's Rugby World Cup. This week has seen the dismissal of Welsh coach Wayne Pivak and the sacking of England coach Eddie Jones. Pivak's already been replaced by returning legend Warren Gatland for another stint in charge of Wales, and Steve Borthwick's expected to take over as England's head coach. Former England back row and rugby podcaster James Haskell thinks it's crazy to make the move with nine months to go to the World Cup. Personally, it's utter madness. You have literally taken the most successful World Cup coach with a 90% winning record and binned him nine months before a World Cup. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio uses handcrafted puppets to bring to life Carlo Collodi's classic tale of a wooden puppet who dreams of becoming a real boy. It's 15 years in the making for Toro and took animators a total of 935 days to put together, and that doesn't include pre- or post-production. The film's out in selected theatres and released on Netflix on Friday, and Guillermo's been dishing all of the deets. The idea is the, for them to become actors, and each of these is... Uh, more expensive than a than a Hyundai, <laughs> so they are really mechanically I'm fine. I'm not touching. <laughs> no. Basically, what we decided to do is act in, in a naturalistic way, not like a cartoon, not hyper. So um, you can make them make mistakes. He's known for going above and beyond for his roles. Now method actor Christian Bale transforms into a gothic detective in Netflix' The Pale Blue Eye trailer. It's more subtle than the drastic weight loss for The Machinist or the weight gain to play Dick Cheney in Vice, but he definitely does have a hint of the Batman voice in this one, though. The Pale Blue Eye hits Netflix on January the 6th, but keep an eye out as some theatres will show a limited release on December the 23rd. Is it true? He wants to listen to the confession with nothing more than piercing look. With enough patience, a suspect will often interrogate himself. This has been the Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced, and published by Daft Doris.